What's going on guys? This is James Allen. You are watching the Developer Journey series where we go over Definity's docs on becoming an ICP blockchain developer. And I believe we are currently at lesson 1.6, Managing Canisters. If you remember, in a previous episode, we deployed a canister to the mainnet. And now that your canister is out there live on Internet Computer Protocol, you want to manage it, right? What does that mean? It means um, upgrading your canister. So if you change your code, you want to upgrade your canister. Topping up your canister with cycles, um, uh, changing who controls your canister, changing the principal ID of who controls your canister, uh, stopping your canister, deleting the canister, and all sorts of good stuff. Seeing the canister's status, what's the canister's health on the main net. So that's what managing canisters is all about. Um, as always, we're going to go over uh, the docs together, 1.6. I'll leave a link in the description, so let's start and have some fun. All right, guys, uh, we're doing lesson 1.6, Managing Canisters. Uh, and the first thing they want us to do is uh, obtain a canister ID, which is fair. Uh, let's fire up ter Terminal and let's navigate to our uh, project directory. Let me open this up for you so that I don't hear any complaint. Let me clear this again. All right. Uh, I don't know where I'm I guess I'm inside the directory already. Let me uh, move up one just to make sure. Yeah. So let's go back in the poll directory. So we are where we're supposed to be. And the first one is to obtain a canister ID. I suppose that's part of managing your canister is obtaining your ID. And the command is DFX canister ID because you're asking for the ID. Poll because um, uh, that's the name of the canister pull back in and you want the ID on the network IC, which as you could see um, is uh, this particular ID. And I was a little freaked out because I was wondering like, is your ID on a local environment different? And I believe it is. So if you do a DFX canister ID pull back in without the network ID flag, you get a, no, it's just, yeah, you get a different, um, you get a different canister ID number on your local environment than you do on a main net. So if you're trying to get your canister ID live on a canister that's live, so make sure you put that flag of network IC. So we got the, the ID of the canister. This is the canister ID right here. And let's keep going. If you want to get the canister ID for a locally deployed canister, okay, so we did that as well. So we got the ID for the network on a network IC and we got the ID on a local environment. Okay. Um, and now they want us to obtain some canister information. And we do that by doing a DFX canister info uh, slash um, uh, the canister name. So let's do that. DFX canister info. We want the canister info and we're going to put the name of the canister. And in this case is the backend canister. So pull back in. Um, not working. I suppose this is because um, I didn't start DFX. So let's do a DFX start flag background. Okay, let's start in on a background. So we're up and running. Let's try that again. DFX canister info poll back in. And here we go. So when you ask for uh, the information of the canister, you get back the controllers. In this case, these are the controller. This is the controller. And you get the module hash, which is what the doc said we're supposed to get. You see the output will return, controllers, module, hash. All right. Um, now they want us to, um, uh, they want us to uh, create a new identity. Adding an identity as controller. So you could create a new identity. So um, uh, in my case, I'm going to name my new identity J. Well, let me see. Uh, let me let me do a DFX identity list to see who I have. All right. So I don't have one named J. So let's do DFX identity new. I'm going to create an identity called J. Uh, and they gave me a seed phrase, which I, I, I don't care. I'm going to delete this identity, so it doesn't matter. So now they're telling us get the uh, use the identity and then get the principle of that particular identity. So let's do that. So let's do DFX identity use J. So now we're using J 
And now we want J's principal. So DFX identity, get principal. And since we're in J's uh, identity, we're under J's identity, is gonna give us the principal for J. So this is the principal for J, let's copy that. Let's copy that real quick. And let me make sure there's no space. Uh, all right, no space. So I just have the identity. Um, okay. So we have the principal. All right. And now they want us to uh, go back to using our uh, regular identity. In my case, I was using default. They were using developer journey. That's the name of the identity they were under. In my case, I was using default. So I'm going to go back to using the default default identity. So DFX identity uh, hues use default. So now I'm using the default identity. And now they want us to update the settings, right? Because that's part of managing your uh, canister is updating the settings. So in that particular case is DFX canister update settings with the name of the canister and then the flag add controller and then you insert the principal id in this case we're going to insert uh j's principal's id which i believe ends in a qe or something like that let me paste it one more time yeah hqe okay good um so let's go back and let's type that command dfx canister update settings right pull back in that's the name of the canister we're updating flag Add controller. Uh, let me make sure I'm spelling this right. Add controller and then um, add controller, paste the principal ID. So it works. Uh, we added a new controller. We added Jay's principal ID as a controller for this particular canister we have up and running. So far, so good. Okay. Now it's saying if we do, uh, if we if we uh, if we ask for the info one more time, we should be seeing uh, J as one of the controllers for that canister. So let's test that right now. So DFX canister. Well, let's clear this. DFX canister info pull back in, and we should be seeing seeing this HQE as one of the controllers. And there we go. You see, this is J right here. Uh, it ends at HQE. I believe um, uh, the default ends at CAI and J's principal ends at HQE. So, so far, so good. Uh, now they're telling us remove, <laughs> remove J is one of their controllers, right? So J's not hanging out for too long. Um, so let's remove uh, J as one of the controllers. Because remember, this is about managing your canister. And these are things you're going to actually do when you have a project live on a mainnet as a developer. So let's let's um, let's clear again and let's remove J as one of the controllers of this particular canister. So DFX canister update settings, right? The name of the canister in our case is pull back in. That's the name of the canister. And we're gonna flag it with a remove flag remove controller. And we're gonna paste J's uh, principal ID again. And we should so it's, it removed it. We should get a correct return. And as you're seeing, uh, it remove uh, the canister. And they're actually saying here that you could have done this with one command. Like you could have replaced G as the controller by using a set controller command. Uh, but I'm not going to do that, right? I'm not going to um, do that. We could do a quick check to see if J has been removed indeed. So let's do a DFX canister, canister info pull back in. And J should be gone. As one of the controllers this time and as you can see jay's history man um okay now managing the running state of a canister so this is pretty uh this is where the good stuff is in my opinion when your canisters are running you want to see what's the status of your canister right and one of the ways you could do that is through this command dfx canister status flag network i see all and in this case you're going to see the status of all your canisters so let's do this command real quick Again, let's clear just to keep things neat and tidy. So DFX canister status uh, flag. I keep pressing the equal sign. Flag I, network I see flag all. So show me the status of all the canisters. And here we go. It's loading. And there we go. You could see uh, this is the canister status. And as you can see here, this is uh, this is the result. Uh, 
you know, um, uh, we expect. We should we should get one result for um, the front end and one result for the back end, right? So we have a canister status right here for the back end. You see, canister status call result for pull back end, and we have a canister status uh, result for uh, the pull front end, right? So and we remember we have two canisters in this particular project: one front end, one back end. And yeah, so now they're saying uh, we they want us to stop a canister now, right? Stopping a canister works in a similar fashion. For example, to stop a canister, a single canister, run the command dfx canister stop pull back end. So let's let's stop the back end canister from running, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Uh, so let's do dfx canister, and we're gonna stop the pull back end canister, and we're gonna stop it on the main net. So pull pull back end flag. Jeez, I can't spell. That's how you know I'm a programmer, right? Um, network I see. So let's stop the pull back end canister. And as you could tell by this output, it just stopped the code for the um, uh, pull back end canister. So the canister is no longer running. You can also stop all canisters using the uh, the network you want the, the canisters are running on and the, the flag of all, which means like, stop all canisters so let's stop all the canisters right which we only have one left the front end so let's do dfx canister stop uh the network flag which is the internet computer network and we're gonna stop all canisters in this case it's stopping um everything so as you could tell it's saying it's stopping code for the back end it's stopping code for the front end so they're both dead now and likewise you could revive your canisters right um you could fire them up again using the um uh wait actually let me make sure. Now they actually want us to do. Uh, they want us to check the canister status before we fire it up again to see if it stopped, if it has a stop status, which makes sense. So let's do that. DFX canister status space. Well, let me clear because again, I don't want to. I want to keep it neat and tidy so you guys could see what's going on. DFX canister status flag network IC. Pull back in, and we know this canister stopped, so the status should give us something like it stopped, right? Waiting, and there we go. Uh, canister result for pull back in status stopped, so everything is working smooth, guy. Again, this is this is to go over how to manage your canisters, and as you can tell, this is quite fun. Uh, now let's start our canisters up again. Let's get them up and running one more time. Uh, we're going to use the all command this time to just get everything running. So DFX canister start, uh, flag the network, which is in that computer, of course, and all. So you see starting code for uh, pull back end and it's starting the canister code for pull front end. So this is good stuff. Our canisters are up and running again. So um, uh, now they want us to check the status, but it, it, if, you, if you can see here, they're, they're doing it using uh, the canister ID rather than the, uh, the, the canister name, right? So let's try this method. Um, let's copy this particular ID right here. Let's copy this ID. Uh, let's clear. Uh, let's do a DFX canister. We want the status of this canister, uh, and we want to see the status on the network IC. And as you could tell, um, it's given us the status that the pullback end canister is running again because we just fired it up again, as you could tell. Good stuff. Now they want us to top up uh, uh, canisters with our cycles. Uh, the, the, the process of refueling your canisters is called topping up on internet computer. And they want us to go over how to top up a canister uh, using the terminal because th th this is part of managing your canisters, right? Your canisters, as they're interacting with clients, are gonna run out of cycles, and you gotta uh, top them up. You gotta refuel them, right? And they're saying right here, uh, there are a few ways to top up your canisters. You could use ICP in your account again, convert ICP into cycles. You could use your cycles ledger, right? You should have a you should have a, a cycles in your uh, wallet, right? So uh, I have eighty seven trillion. Make sure you get some cycles from the cycles faucet. And you could use the NNS DAP web UI. So you can actually log on to internet computer and uh, using the GUI there, uh, refill, top up your canisters with cycles. And you could use a third party uh, service called Cycles Op, which uh, gives you a giant 
404, unfortunately. But I think Cycle Ops is uh, up and running. Uh, let's let's check Cycles Ops. I think it's what it's called. Cycle. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um. God, this this is a, this is a nightmare. We're getting bicycle. <laughs> We're getting bicycle websites. Uh, let's type Cycle Ops Internet Computer. Maybe uh, maybe we'll be more successful with this search. And there's no S, so Cycle Ops. Um, I can't seem to find anything. So guys, if if you if if you find Cycle Ops, let me know because um, this does look like a cool uh, tool. Oh, there we go. Here is Cycle Ops. Uh, so let me go ahead and add this. Uh, so you see, make top up rules for your canister. So you could basically create rules as far as like when your canister should be topped up, and uh, once the uh, condition is met, uh, Cycle Ops automatically refuels them for you. Uh, so that's a tool you could also use. But let's go back to the docs. Um, okay, you can control the maximum amount of reserve cycles by setting the reserve cycles limit. So you could you could basically put conditions on like what's the reserve cycles you want. Uh, let's follow this documentation right here. Um, so, uh, DFX canister update settings, right, with a canister ID, and then flag reserve cycles with a limit. Um, shit, <laughs> you didn't see that. Um, all right, let's try that. Instead of forty-two, though, let's do one eighty, right? Let's let's try our own freaking numbers here. Uh, why not, right? So, DFX canister update settings. Right. Uh, let me paste the canister ID, uh, and let me see what's the rest of the command. Uh, flag reserved cycles with a limit of 180. Right, and then we want that to be set the setting on a network IC. Let's flag it with the network IC command, and let's run it. Okay. So it seems like we put the new uh, reserve cycles limit. Now they want us to check if that reserve cycles limit is correctly set using the canister status command. So let's do DFX canister status, paste the um, ID, flag it with the network. And we should see a reserve cycles limit of 180. And here we go. I don't know if you guys could see it. Reserve cycles of 180. In the docs, it says 42, but I put 180 just to like be a little bit more creative, right? Um, so here we go. Uh, we've done that. Once the reserve cycles balance reaches the reserve cycles limit, the system is going to fail all operations that require cycles reservation, and you'll get and you'll get an error message like this. So again, they're just explaining what's going to happen when you meet those reverse cycles limits. Okay, uh, you could top it up using ICP. Right, you're gonna use uh, the ledger, the DFX ledger command, uh, and let's do that. Um, so let's first let me let me make sure like my ledger account has enough uh, ICPs, right? So let's do a DFX ledger balance. Um, let's do a DFX ledger balance flag network IC. So I have 0.4 ICPs left. So let's top it up with DFX ledger top up. Let's let's put one point one ICP right, um, and flag it with the amount. And I'm gonna put zero point one right, zero point zero one right. And I think you have to put the network behind this as well. Flag network IC. So here we go. I'm fueling it with. Uh, I'm burning some ICPs here. I'm burning point zero one ICP. To top up this canister, that's practically useless. <laughs> but this is good for uh, tutorial purposes. This is taking quite a while, as you could tell, but uh, might be worth it. So here we go. Uh, it looks like it's working. Cycles are being, uh, I mean, uh, internet computers are being burnt into cycles. Jeez, this is taking quite a while. Let's see if we have anything else after this. Do a balance check. Uh, 
Man, this is really taking long. I, I don't know what's going on here. Can I type anything? I suppose. Um, is this done? No. It's not. Um, okay, whatever. Let me see if I could do a new terminal. Because this is, this is taking forever. I'm not sure why it's taking so long. Let's do a DFX ledger balance check again, just to make sure that the ICPs are indeed burning. So yeah, it did burn the 0 0.01 ICPs. Uh, for some reason, the output's taking quite a while to uh, to finish, uh, but it is working. We did top it up with 0 0.1 ICP. Okay. Um, what else do we have here? Um, and I think now they want us to stop and delete this canister. Um, what happened here? Um, it just I guess it, it, it went, it cleared it because I typed the clear command. I shouldn't have done that. I should have just let it finish because maybe it would have given us some output. But I'm pretty sure um, we've topped up our canister with point zero one ICPs. So we don't longer need this terminal. Or maybe we could just close this one. All right. Um, so they want us to stop and delete the canister, <laughs> which is fine, I suppose. Um, so let's do that. Uh, DFX canister stop, paste the canister ID, stop it on a network IC. So we're stopping the canister. Canister has been stopped. So now they want us to delete that particular canister as well after we stopped it. So notice the workflow here. You stop it before you delete the canister, right? Just remember that. You stop it before you delete the canister. So let's delete the canister now. It's saying, um, uh, did I did I mess something up here? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, DFX canister delete flag network IC. Cannot find a configuration file. Can't? Oh, I'm not inside the developer journey. Uh, I'm not inside the... This is why I shouldn't have left the old terminal. Uh, okay. So let's go into uh, the poll. Okay, let's clear. And let's do DFX canister uh, delete. Uh, and then uh, the network name. So here we go, it's working. This is why I like making errors live because you know when you see errors being fixed, you understand the situation better. So now it's basically deleting um, uh, the, the the canister. Uh, you see beginning withdrawal of cycles. So this is, this is we're getting the correct output, right? Setting the controller to identity principle. So you, you're, you're getting the correct output, it's working. So it's deleting uh, the canister. And it's... It failed to delete. Um, because it's out of cycles. <laughs> Am I reading this correctly? Did, didn't we just top this up? <laughs> with some cycles. Um, all right, sure. Um, another thing we could do is uh, set a freezing threshold. I don't know if we could actually run this command, given that we just like stopped the canister and attempted to delete it which I guess it never hurts to try. Oh, I see what's going on here. Um, we did that in a local environment. We should have done that in the a, in a network IC. So let's do that in the a, in a network IC. So let's, let's, let's do that in the mainnet. Let's delete, let's stop and delete the canister at the mainnet. So stop, pull front end. Okay, it all makes sense now. So we let's stop the canister on the main net. Uh, we did it. We the previous commands we executed those were local commands, right? And it failed to delete because we didn't have any cycles uh, on our local environment on a canister. So let's delete it on the main net now. Canister delete, pull back end, and let's flag it with the network IC. Okay. So it's. Beginning that process on the mainnet now. 
So it says, do you want to proceed? Uh, yes, I, I do want to proceed. This is taking quite a while, as you can tell, but it's worth it. Uh, it's giving us the same error. Uh, fail to delete canister pullback end. Um, how can it be out of, out of cycles when I pumped it with cycles, right? This is an interesting error. Uh, let's try stopping all the canisters and deleting all the canisters. Um, so let's try that. It's going to stop all this. This command is going to stop all the canisters, the front end and the back end. So the stopping command works just fine. And let's try deleting all the canisters on a network. So here we go. This is probably going to fail again. If any of you knows why the delete canister command is failing, share it in the comment section. After all, we're learning this together. But it seems like we're done after this. You know, we don't have any more uh, commands to go through. Uh, meanwhile, I'll do some investigation and see what I come up with in terms of the failure for deleting uh, that we're getting here. But uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, uh, I'm going to give you uh, one little homework to do. And uh, yeah. All right, guys, we just went over uh, the commands to uh, manage your canister on the main net. It was really fun. Everything went smooth. We did have a small hiccup with deleting a canister. Um, there seems to be a, a little bug there. I'm not sure if it's from Definity's part or if I did something wrong. Uh, I'm definitely going to investigate, but I have a homework for you. See if you could find what went wrong with the canister delete command. Uh, after all, we're in this together. This is a learning experience where uh, we do this as a group. Speaking of group, if you want to join uh, my study group where we study um, uh, ICP blockchain uh, together, uh, you're welcome to do so at two ICPs a month. Remember, part of uh, learning something is not just immersing yourself uh, in whatever you're trying to learn, but also being surrounded by a community who's learning with you. The community is just as important as you're studying in practice. So if you're interested in joining my developer community, it's only two ICPs a month. Uh, hit me up on James Allen Zero on Instagram. You could also hit me up on Discord at Sid Quain Zero. And once you pay the two ICP fees, I send you a link and uh, we meet once a week uh, to study the docs together. And uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. Now, um, let's see how long it takes to see um, uh, what went wrong with the canister uh, delete command. I'm pretty sure some of you will figure it out pretty fast, but uh, I'll be looking out in the comment section. In any case, my misfits, don't forget to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I will see you next time.